<laughs> Welcome back to Tuesday Talks with Tina. I am your host, Tina Cathay. This week, we're going to be talking about holding yourself accountable. We are in week seven. This time has gone by super fast, and I cannot believe it. So let's go through our housekeeping per usual. Because I have to hit this first. Okay, so each week we're taking inventory of our current habits, as you all know, and then we're working on developing consistent routines. The keyword is consistent, so then that way we can reach our health goals. And then we're doing this all during our lunch break. So I am your host, Tina Cathay. I'm a business, small business owner, certified trainer and coach. I am currently serving in the Air National Guard, and I'm an advocate for women finding balance because we wear so many hats and we tend to prioritize everyone else except for ourselves. And I am honored and excited to be part of your wellness journey. So let's get into our housekeeping. As I said, I'm a personal certified personal trainer, but I am not a medical professional. So before starting any new fitness routine, I advise you to consult with your primary care physician prior to starting. And then our funding disclaimer. Funding for this initiative is provided in part by Mission Ambition LLC. Also, we have many military women participating in this series, thanks to the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services through the Community Mental Health Association of Michigan. They're, they are providing additional funding for this initiative through a federal community mental health block grant and a substance abuse prevention and treatment block grant supporting women veterans strong. A few guidelines, please be respectful to others and yourself, no selling or soliciting, and then also no judging others or yourself. Okay, last week, what did we talk about? We talked about why have an accountability partner. Um, we talked about the benefits of having one, what to look for in an accountability partner, and then also how to best utilize the accountability partner that you choose. If you missed that video, um, go back to week six. That's what um, that lesson was on. And you can go back and check that out and take some notes. All right, let's get into it, ladies. Lesson part one, ways to track your wins. So we're talking about how to hold yourself accountable. This is one of the ways, how to track your wins. So write it down. That one is super easy. Some people are more a pen to paper type of tracker, which is awesome. You get you a regular notebook. You can print out our journal if you haven't already. You can get another different journal with um, bullet points. You can create your own style of however you want to track your, your fitness routine, the weights you lifted. Um, also, or you can track what food you've eaten. And then uh, something that I like to do as far as writing it down, I'll go into the gym and I'll go off of what I did last week as far as lifting weights. And then I'll increase my weight and make sure I track that so I know that I'm continuously progressing in um, my weightlifting. So then I know like, hey, I'm getting stronger. This is cool, especially those weeks where I'm feeling kind of out of it. So it's a good thing to go look back on and see your progress. Um, record before and after pictures or videos. This one, not a lot of people like to do. But I will tell you, it is an amazing way to see the progress, even if you don't see it yourself. Most of the time, when you're going through like a weight loss journey or any kind of physical change, people around you will see it before you do. We tend to not be able to see that because we see our body all the time. So those little micro mini changes, we typically don't see. But if you take videos and pictures of yourself, um, from the front, from the side, um, I would recommend doing it in a sports bra and like a black sports bra and like black underwear or shorts. That way you can do it like weekly if you want, you can do it monthly, however you want to track it. And then you can look at those, go back and look at those pictures and see the progress that you are making. So that's a good way to do that. Even videos, if you are worried about form or maybe you forgot like, oh, how much weight 
have I been lifting? Recording yourself doing a certain exercise. Push-ups are a great one. So then you, that way you can see the progress that you've been making. Also clothing. How many times have you put on a pair of jeans and you said to yourself, oh my goodness, I cannot button this up. It's getting a little tighter. I can't zip it up all the way. Um, your clothing is a great way to track your progress because you can feel if it's a little tighter or if it's looser, um, a shirt that you wear often, jeans, even your workout pants, things like that is a good way to track. Um, taking measurements. So that's, I don't know if your doctors do this, but I think they tend to do this during physicals. So you're just, just taking the, the measurement tape going around your waist, trying, um, seeing where your pant size is at, um, even around your arms is a good way. Even your thighs is also um, a good thing to track as well. And then also this one is underrated. Measure how long you are active. So what do I mean by this? If you are going out for a walk and you're going out for a 30 minute walk and you feel yourself at that 30 minutes, maybe a little bit before I am tired, I'm winded. You look at your watch, your heart rate is high. Go out another time. Well, first write that down, then go out another time, 30 minutes and see how you feel. Maybe you're not winded. Maybe your heart rate is not as high and maybe you can jump up to 40 minute, a 40 minute walk. You can do this with your exercises and things like that. So tracking that as well and track your um how fatigued or not fatigued you are when you're working out and then heart rate again that ties into that walk monitoring your heart rate blood pressure things like that and and even when you go to the doctor these are things that they can check on for you as well so doing these things also help you with your gratification if you go out for a walk and you're like oh my goodness that was amazing i feel great you're not as tired or winded, then that's that instant gratification we were talking about when we do our, our vision boards. Um, also assessments, squatting. If you're only able to squat in a chair right now, so what I mean by that is sitting in a chair and then standing back up. If you remove the chair and you're able to comfortably squat and stand up without using the chair, the assistance of a chair, that's instant gratification right there. That's something you can measure. You can do things like push-ups. Maybe you're doing them on your knees and then you try them on your toes and you were never able to do that before. Track that. Planks. Um, I said blood pressure, running. So there's so many different things that you can track. It's all going to be um, tailored to what you are doing. So just note that and keep that in mind. We're going to go into our journaling time. And this question is, how can or will you track your fitness goals? So again, this is going to be different for everyone else. What do you want to track? You can one week decide to track something and maybe you want to change your mind and add something else to track. It's all up to you. So with that being said, let's take our two minutes and do our journaling. One more minute.
All right, ladies. How can or will you track your fitness goals? Would anyone like to share how they plan on tracking their goals or their progress? Mine's short and sweet. I um, I have a Fitbit on my wrist that I use that syncs with my phone. So when I don't have my phone on me, um, that works. And then I'm using this journal to write things down. And um, I'm trying to figure out how I can get my measurements in. Like, uh, I, I got to ask somebody. I used to have somebody at the gym that I, tra- that I trusted. But uh, yeah, maybe we can work on that. Well, I'm on. I'll put down the thing that I have. I need to be, um, first off, write it down. I need to be consistent. I'm not writing it down. And I'm having difficulty getting through and doing these things for myself. And um, But I feel like I should uh, write down the exercises that I'm doing and um, seeing how consistent I am with my follow through, write down the type of exercises I'm doing and uh, increase them as I go along. So goals are there as I got to be consistent. That is my biggest issue. Let's go into our second part of the lesson. So part two, we're going to talk about how to stick to your plans. This is kind of touching on what Laura mentioned, that consistency and trying to stay with it and make sure you're doing it on the days that you are um, wanting to do it. So one of those things is fall back on previous week's lesson. So week six, we talked about having an accountability partner. Um, That's another way that you can go back to that lesson, the notes that you took, go reach out to that accountability partner. Use the tools and resources that you have. Like if you have someone designated to days where you're not being consistent or you need that extra push, reach out. Um, week five, seeing where you are on the accountability ladder. Um, remember there's different, it's one through eight, eight is being the highest one is the lowest, um, week four vision board, go back to that vision board. You created what goals do you have that'll help with that consistency and help you stick to that plan. It's something that you created yourself. So then sometimes we need that reminder to go back and look at those things. Cause uh, again, a lot of times the stuff is out of sight, out of mind. If it's not like right in the forefront, cause there's so much going on throughout your day. Having that visual reminder will help. Um, creating a smart goal, figuring out your why. Why are you doing this? Why are you wanting to be consistent with your workouts? Whatever your why is, and it could change, but it's your why. Maybe you write that down, put that on your vision board as well or share it with your accountability partner. So then when you are feeling inconsistent and you need that extra push or that motivation, they can text you or call you and say, hey, Tina, remember you said that you wanted, you had these goals. Did you do your workout today? You only did two workouts this week. You said you wanted to do three. So they can go back and use your why to help motivate you. And then those smart fitness goals. Remember, we want to keep it simple. We don't want it to be something that's too hard to do. Remember, SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Um, Be gentle with yourself with those goals too, because we don't want to overwhelm ourselves. We don't want to make this a chore. We want to make this second nature a part of our lifestyle because we're, we're in it for the longevity game, right? Uh, create a great playlist. This, I will say, is one of my favorite things to do. Sometimes I, I listen to a lot of audio books and whatnot or, or talks when I work out, but some days I need a really good playlist, especially when I'm doing cardio. So I'll go back to different songs that I like that motivate me um, during my workout. And I have certain playlists depending on what I'm doing. That helps a lot too. So your favorite song, whatever it is, um, create that playlist. So then as you're doing your exercise or you're not, or actually you can even listen to it before you to get you hyped up to go exercise. So however you want to do that, make it fun. Don't do anything that you don't want to do. (laughs) So if you like to dance, dance. If you want to walk, walk, lift weights, 
if it's chair exercises, yoga, do something that feels good to you and for your body. So this is all, it's your exercises, it's your workouts. So let's do things that are fun for us. All right. With that being said, let's go into our second journaling prompt. So this one is going to help you get into that consistency that you're you're wanting and needing. So you're going to write down a actual workout schedule. And again, it can change week to week. It doesn't have to be a 30-day thing to where you write it all out in one sitting. I can tell you that my workouts, my schedule change week to week sometimes because just that's just how it is. So I want you to take the time now. And if we need more time, I'm definitely happy with giving you more time. But let's do it now. We're going to write down a workout schedule that works for you. Write down the day, the time, how long you're going to work out, your frequency. Is it going to be two days a week, three days, six, whatever works for your schedule? So an example will be Monday, 5.30 p.m. I'm going to do 30 minutes for three days, and I'm going to do this three days each week. So maybe a Monday, Wednesday, Friday workout. All right, so we're going to take two minutes now. And again, if you need more time, feel free to take more time because this is what's going to help keep you consistent. One minute. Who would like to share their schedule? I'll go first. <laughs> um, first off, every week on Tuesday, I'm doing pickleball for like two hours. So that's going to continue each Tuesday. And um, hopefully I can pick up another day to do some practicing with some other people that are also doing pickleball because it's a session that's been paid for to go. But then I know that I need to do before and after the days of pickleball and another day. So right now I've got a Monday, Wednesday and Saturday to do either uh, like 30 minutes to 45 minutes I've written down for at home or at the gym because of membership at the one place and likely to be in the afternoon, maybe after five. So I've got some times there, um, variables, but it's there, I have something. <laughs> Yeah, I started with like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I don't like schedules. <laughs> and I, I, I fight them. Um, but um, that's why I joined this because I know I need to, to be more consistent. So I did Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 3.30 p.m. to do yoga because I want to I wanna get back into yoga. I really miss my yoga. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays at one o'clock, I 
um, I'm increasing my stuff. I'm already pretty consistently active with 5,000 steps a day like that. Like that's like cake. That's my cake walk. So literally 15 minutes a day of walking and then I'll hopefully build up within the next two weeks from there. So let's go into part three of our lesson. So how to put yourself first. Um, a recent data from CVS Health 2022 Healthcare Insight Study provides insight into the current state of women's holistic health. This is something that we have been talking about from week one. So here's some stats for you. Only 21% of women said their health goals were nearly completed or that they'd made significant progress toward them compared to 38% of men who said the same. Women tend to bear the brunt of more cons um, constraints and responsibilities. So that's the house, the kids, even going to work, doing the drop-offs, the pickups, things like that, whatever their day-to-day -day tasks are, women are mainly doing most of it. Um, women are more often than not taught to prioritize, prioritize their family's needs over their own. Does a lot of this sound like you? <laughs> um, so how do you put yourself first then? If you, we are taught to put our family first and take care of the household, one, we have to work through those mental barriers of feeling that guilt and shame of putting yourself first. So here are a couple of um, ways to do that. First, realize that you are worth it. I know it might sound a little cliche, but it's absolutely true. You are worth it. A lot of times we get in our head and think um, we might not be deserving of reaching these goals. It is going to be a life change for you or maybe your partner because your um, routine is changing. Your body's going to change. Your The way you act, you might act a little differently because you might have a lot of energy more so than you were you did before. Also, putting yourself first is not selfish. We tend to think that because we're thinking about us and we're putting ourselves first, that we're being selfish. And that's not the case at all. It definitely is not. Putting yourself first means that you're prioritizing your health. So then that way you can assist and help everyone else, whether it's the grandkids, whether it's your kids, um, to better take care of your partner. So if you're healthy, you're able to help other people. And then understand that prioritizing your health not only benefits you, but everyone else around you. If your cup is empty, how in the heck do you think you're going to help anybody else? If you're running on fumes, that means you're going to be short-tempered. You're not going to have the energy. You don't want to be bothered. You're going to not be able to give your best self in whatever it is you're trying to do, whether it's work, whether it's um, be around friends or family, things like that. So just keep that in mind. Don't ever feel like because you told someone, no, I can't because I have my work, my workout is scheduled during this time when they ask you to do something. Don't feel like you are being selfish by saying no. Um, maybe invite that person who's trying to get on your schedule during your workout time, invite them to come with you for some journaling time. So this one, I really want you to take inventory and dig and dive deep. If we need more time to think about this one and jot some stuff down, then we will. Do you think you are deserving of reaching your fitness goals? Why or why not? Thank you. 
got one more minute. Alrighty, does anyone need more time? Okay, would anyone like to share? Do you think you're deserving? My answer is yes for all of you. <laughs> oh, sure. My answer is yes, I, I do think, I do believe that I am deserving of reaching my financial, my fitness goals. And why, why not me? who better should I serve than myself so that I can better help anybody else that needs it, that I do have to prioritize myself first. All right. I put, I believe I'm worthy of reaching my fitness goals because if I don't, my health and welfare suffer. I won't be able to serve others if I'm not well. Plus having fun means enjoying who you are with those I love. Um, I feel I'm deserving of it. I of reaching my goals, but then subconsciously, I feel like um, I lack follow through. Therefore, maybe subconsciously, I am not feeling that I need to be worthy of it. Um, I, I need more self-reflection here. And I know that I need to realize my own self-gratification so that you can, can do this. You can do this and not rely on other people to give me that. Like you have with you, you got someone who's your partner, but when that partner fails, then you've got still mm -hmm. me that I have to do and reason why. So I need more self-reflection and that's, I think is fine, but I do believe I'm worthy of it. So I can uh, be there for others without being grumpy or whatever, so, <laughs> or irritable, whichever. So different, all different. Here we are. Yes. Yeah. Awesome job today. Um, Definitely thank you all for being on here and sharing and joining me every week and just being awesome. Um, we're going to go through our word of the week. Our word of the week is grace. That means courteous and goodwill. So give yourself grace. You are worthy. You are deserving as we keep telling each other. It's easy to tell it to someone else, but tell it to yourself as well. Give yourself grace. Um, the challenge for this week is 10 mountain climbers. And then next week, we're going to talk about how to use accountability apps. So there's a lot of apps out there, so many. So we're going to talk about that. If you want to bring your phone and have it available for you to maybe download something and check it out if you want. And then as always, thank you so much. I will see you all next week at the same time. You can scan this QR code. It'll have that registration link so you, so you can send it to another sister friend um, and share the health and all that good stuff, ladies. And again, thanks you to our sponsors, Women Veteran Strong and Others Over Self.